so I wanted to put some of the moments that um, I didn't put in the movie um, on, the, on the DVD and as extras. And one of them is the opening scene of the movie. Actually, the movie didn't start in Central Park. It started in their house with a gigantic fight that they had uh, between each other. And it was something that took, all, it took a long time to shoot and really kind of underlined the basis of their relationship. And we shot this thing and we loved it. And when I put it in the movie, it was kind of like we, t we told you everything about the couple and it felt like there was no tension in the movie. And so I said, you know what? We find out every piece of this information along the way. Why don't we just take it out? And it was one of those incredible moments of realizing that the, the thing that we shot was really backstory. It, it really, really would have been a better thing to just have been something that we worked with the actors. Now, as it turned out, it was an incredible exercise for all of us and the actors to know where the characters were coming from, the fight they were talking about, where they were when this tragedy started. Um, so here you are, the first scene of the movie was actually a fight between Elliot and Alma. Listen, I'm not gonna... I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't think you meant it. How can you be sure? I almost hurt you. My God, I almost hurt you. I'm turning into a monster. Soon you'll find severed body parts of strangers in the freezer, Elliot. This is how it starts. <sighs> You didn't mean it. You didn't. I mean, I saw videos of you playing softball in high school. If you wanted to hit me, you wouldn't have missed. You think? Yeah. I'm really sorry. I was just trying to make a point before. Okay. Tell me. What was my point? Do you remember my point? We're different. Right, right. We see different things when we look at the same thing. Elliot, that's been our problem from the beginning. Look, I almost killed you we're not the same where it counts don't you think that's true no okay give me an example we both love rocky road ice cream Are you being serious yeah everyone loves rocky road ice cream no that's a particular flavor people don't like it it's a flavor for a reason well then how do you explain walking into an ice cream parlor and every time the rocky road tub is always full we were always the first two scoops what are you talking about you're an optimist. I'm a realist. Elliot, you don't protect yourself like an adult, and you don't protect me. Does this make any sense, what I'm saying? Yeah. Mood ring. You remember? Yeah. Let's be treated by a therapist that looks like this. I look like Frankenstein. Here, put it on. I don't want to. Let's see what you're really feeling. Elliot. It'll be fun. Why can't you be serious? Okay, I'll be serious. I'm gonna tell you something you should never tell your spouse. The reason I'm scared to have kids, Elliot, is all I see when I look at the world is crap. How am I supposed to bring a kid into this world feeling like that? I knew when I met the right guy, he would make me feel safe to have that kid. He would change the way I see things. On our wedding day, when I walked down the aisle and I saw you waiting, I knew you weren't the guy to make me feel safe to change the way I see things. What? You really felt that? The reason you're a good teacher, Elliot, is because you're a kid. The kids relate to you that way. But suppose we had a child and something went wrong. What if his lungs failed? I don't know, something bad. How would you handle it? I don't know. How could anybody know how they would react? A kid's lungs are going to fail. 
I just don't believe in the big moment you'll step up. You're a kid. How could you say that? How could you say that to me? What are we gonna do, Willie? I don't know. When I first put the movie together, I put everything in the movie, and we watched it, and it was like an X. It was so hard to watch, and it became obvious where there was a handful of things that went a little too far, but I wanted to show you a couple of those things, and the first thing that I pulled out of the movie, I trimmed a little bit, was the lion attack scene in the uh, diner that they watch on the iPhone, and it's amazing, you know, what they did, and when they, when they first put it together, I was like, oh my God, how did, how did we do that? And I even forgot how we did it. And they were like, oh, that's, that, they did it this way. They tricked you into that. So when you watch this, it's really gruesome. Um, I hope you enjoy it. This is the extended version of the lion attack. Oh, that ring really works. That's amazing. Oh my God. Oh my God, look at this. My sister sent it to me. It was taken an hour ago at the Philadelphia Zoo. God, what kind of terrorists are these? The animals weren't being affected. Okay, now this... This is like one of my favorite scenes in the screenplay. This was one of the death sequences in the movie that I cut out of the movie. This is, this is a very rare thing because almost every death sequence is in the movie. And I took this one out. This was based on my, my kids are in pianos. So we go to piano recitals a lot. And so I got this idea while I was in one of the piano recitals. Oh, what if, what if the toxin affected everybody in this recital? So in the diner, what actually happens in the script is they watch the lion attack and then they watch this video, which is a video of a recital that's being broadcast all over the internet of something that happened of a parent recording their, their kid's recital and the toxin effects is, affects the kids. So check it out. It's really eerie and really scary and it was really one that took us a long time to shoot. Um, sad it's not in the movie, but you know, there was like you know, one too many deaths. So hope you enjoy it. Hey, look at this. It came from a small town. Small towns are being hit now.
So when I when I put the movie together and I put everything in, there was one that scene that everybody freaked out about because I showed it, and it was this one. This